Welcome back. I want to give you a quick walkthrough of the R Suite architecture. Now we'll look at some source code. First, let's take a quick look at this high level architecture diagram. It shows all the important layers. Lower left corner is the MarkLogic XML database. Right next to it is a non XML data store. So R Suite store is just the metadata and the data XML. So metadata is XML, data is XML, stores that into the MarkLogic database. The non-XML, the binary files, images, audio, video, get stored onto non-XML disk drives. Now you can see here the authentication services. We have uh, ability to do the, the security layer here is done, is provided through uh, Job API. The majority of the R suite code resides in the uh, is Java and it runs within a Tomcat application server. In the middle here you got the transformation services as I may have said before is this is the heart and soul of the system. This is the DITA open toolkit services which I uh, discussed earlier. You have ingestion capability, export capabilities. This workflow engine is another critical piece. This uses the JBPM workflow. Uh, we'll show a little bit of that in a few seconds here. I'll show you the Java docs and some of the APIs. So here's a high level topology diagram I always like to talk about. Here's the uh, R Suite Tomcat server. Or to note here is that there's a database, a MySQL database that's stored. It's running within the Tomcat server. It's used for the workflow engine. I'll show you some of the, the tables in a few seconds. On the right side is your non-XML disk drives that I just mentioned. And then on the bottom is the MarkLogic cluster. It's a three node cluster. It is not configured for local disk failure. If a local disk failover, I would. Quick diagram just showing the Uh, the example here I'd like to talk about is R Suite has the ability to upload 20 files at a time, 100 files at a time. If the disk fails while the upload's happening, then you can get caught in a awkward state. So anyway, that was my purpose for doing this slide. Really, the code consists of Java, this uh, JBPM business process management framework. It uses Apache IV to manage the dependencies. Uh, the JavaScript framework is Ember. Ember uh, XQuery code is used in the MarkLogic layer. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Groovy is used for a lot of the administrative things. Did an open toolkit. Exist LT, we talked about that. The real extendability, customizability is done through the plugins, uh, both Java and Data Exist LT plugins. We'll show the R Suite API docs uh, shortly. So here we go. Here's the here's the Java docs. Uh, the R Suite does a great job at documenting some of these uh, capabilities. Uh, before I do that, let me show you. Here's the I mentioned this earlier. The workflow engine is based on JBPM. And we'd like to show. I think this is a good point to quickly log in and show the MySQL database and just show you the list of tables. So here we're at the console. Here's the list of tables. Um, I don't really need to customize this in any way. This is standard JBPM. We'll show how workflows are configured shortly. So before we get into the source code, I just want to show you quickly some of the administrative consoles that are available. This is I logged into an instance of R Suite. This is uh, user view. I'm going to move into an administrative console. And here you have users that are logged in. Let's give this a few seconds here for it to render. OK, there you see this, this notion of active workflows. 
there's this xquery console i have not used this at all so it's interesting that it's this is there here's this notion of ingesting uh hot folders you put xmail or zip file there it gets ingested automatically what i wanted to show here is the configuration so we have a lot of these config settings here let's configure the smtp services mysql database ldap services I want to show some of the XML schemas. There's these ability to configure XML schemas from this front end. There's layer metadata definitions. Don't want to get too deep on this right now. The other thing is the workflows. So the workflow is the critical piece. Let's take a look at an example for the cover design workflow. Look at that. I'll click on the view XML. You'll see this is how the JPPM work engine. Oh, you can set up the events actions to take from events. So don't want to get too deep into that. I just wanted to show you this. Other thing is the uh, the plugins. Here's the the plugins that are installed. There's some custom ones here that you won't recognize, but there's developer plugin here for deleting things and configuration plugins. Workflow Visualizer plugin. These are uh, could be discussed. Okay, I just wanted to show the Mark Logic management tools that are available here, just to show. Uh, in this case, we have. I'm looking at a development server, so there's not much data in there right now. So I tend to use this disk space management utility. Just go right to the admin console, and I'll show you the the way the RSuite database is configured. So I click on this, you see there are some documents there. MarkLogic is being underutilized in this implementation. There's really just the default indexes here in place. Would be an ISBN uh, index should be, could be added in this case. So just want to show that that's what's available there. Mark logic is configured. It's really XDBC connection. You can see it's utilizing the RSuite database here. Communicates on port 8003. And it's using the source code resides on this shared drive here. So I'm logged in. Um, logged into the Mark logic, one of the Mark logic nodes right now. And looking at the disk space, and you can see that this is the folder where the where the code resides. Let's do uh, a listing and see. Let's see what we have. There it is. There's just these files. Let's take a look at that a little deeper in a few seconds. Okay, let's take a look bit look at the code. I have a Java here. I have an Eclipse develop tool here, and let's take a look at the Mark Logic code first. So very, uh, nothing crazy Look at the search metadata. Here's the functions that are used. I'm going to imagine that this was written a while ago and does not require any changes. So Mark Logic, there's a set of Java APIs, which eventually trickle down to these functions. Love to you, uh, devote more time to this, but let's take a look around at the other uh, pieces. I, this extension guide really is uh, shows you how to do the customization. Here's this nice cookbook, of course. Um, I have set up the plugins. Talks about layered, uh, layered metadata. I'll see if I could post these documents up on to the blog um, shortly. Yeah, I think this is the important part here, the understanding the extension points. So you have the ability to extend the browse tree ex menus, the cascade menus that we showed earlier. There's the ability to right click and add new menus. Event bus, uh, very interesting. Managing object advisors. There's a 
plugin lifecycle listener reporting transformation how we invoke a transformation and here's how you create the uh, forms this workflow apis so a lot of very useful documentation here let's take a look at the java doc for this so let's click on this link here and here we could scroll down a bit i think looking at this r suite service is interesting so you have the metadata services notification manager plugin manager so very uh, useful there's the managed here it is. I'm looking for the managed object services. So access to the Oracle Logic data is really done through these managed object services. Let's just take a look using my uh, Eclipse view here. So here's some R Suite plugin XML. What I'm curious about is to see the how this doc to XML gets invoked, and you can see it's exposed as a service. We could take a look at some other things. There's data types. And I can take a look at the, here's the, what the Java code looks like. There's a cookbook that I showed on how to create plugins. The R Suite uh, extension guide. And here's the cookbook. So this is important, I'm glad that time was taken to rigorously document and give examples. Thanks for listening. Gary Russo.